Okay, we are rolling. Hello. Um, hello. We're doing something pretty, uh, pretty intense today. Or well, not intense. It's uh, it's fun. It's going back to going back to the first story I ever, I suppose, published. Question mark. <laughs> released. Yeah, released is probably the better word. So yes, in our epic quest uh, to rally up a uh, short story fodder for the upcoming uh, collection, uh, I had the utmost, the idea of utmost brilliance, because of course, uh, uh, I suggested to Nux that instead of uh, giving a full overhaul to his first release story, uh, he should instead pick pieces of it and rework them as uh, short stories because this gives us some wiggle room and at the same time gives us short story fodder and now what we have here is this is, is this story in its original state and uh, the idea is to go over what's here and work out an, a new outline based on that mm -hmm. Shall I, shall I read? I'm going to read up to... Hmm. Yeah, read and then we can re read a piece and then we can discuss what can be salvaged, <laughs> And fair warning, people, you beautiful people who are listening and watching this, this is, this is old material. We've come a long way since then. <laughs> okay, so chapter one, the warning. Ooh. Artificial rain hit the windscreen of the rented speeder as it made its way through the seemingly deserted Archaeon industrial complex towards its destination. It was the early hours of the morning as the vehicle pulled up to the litter-covered <coughs> curve and paused long enough to let its passengers onto the street. Two hooded figures quietly stepped out into the poorly lit night of Archaeos, taking in the, most viscous, the almost viscous stench that filled the air. As soon as the door slid back into place, the speeder turned about 90 degrees on the spot before pulling away onto the opposite side of the road. Seconds later, and it had disappeared back into the darkness. The, pas the passengers glanced at each other through thin veils. After a quick nod to one another, the pair turned and began walking towards the end of the street. The hooded cloaks they wore seemed to help them blend into the shadows while also keeping them dry. They kept aware of their surroundings, freezing as the occasional vehicle or security dro droid went past. Eventually, they came to a stop outside a large, a huge pair of rust-covered gates. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there because mm -hmm. this is, this is all location setting. Yes, right. this, this, this could probably be done in two sentences. Mm -hmm. Also, like, I think uh, I'm, I'm gonna ignore all the seemingly deserted and almost viscous and all that so that's yeah. that's like pff, we can <laughs> we can fix that easily but basically what uh, what we want out of this uh, paragraph if I, I'm assuming it's all one paragraph <laughs> 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 so okay, yeah. so what we want here is to sort of distill out the why it's written and then write it better. Oh, mm, okay, just mm, write this better. <laughs> 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 I think that's just going to be a note. Did, for the uh, did, determine right. determine what is the purpose of any given paragraph, and then uh, fulfill that purpose better, according to our present day skills. So so technical. <laughs> Um, da, da, da. oh god, here we go. <laughs> maybe your... maybe put some uh, markers down or or use different color because <coughs> later on it's gonna get difficult to distinguish. Oh, that's a horrible green. Let's go, dog. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so prepare your butts for some sweeping generalizations. Um, a sharp female voice came from under one of the hoods. She sounded human, but spoke with an authority and tone that wasn't natural to the race. This is it. <laughs> the other figure reluctantly nodded. That's awful. I should be. Uh, it should be more like uh, this. It, it needs to be more hissy. I can't do the reclaimer voice. 
this is it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much something like that, you know. I think you you could pull it off a bit better because you've got the female tones. Anyway. <laughs> Females! <laughs> I've been watching some uh, Deep Space Nine lately. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, the sturdy metal panel stood like a rusting goliath in the high-rise complex. Luckily the lock wasn't as sturdy as the gate itself, and after utilising an automatic lockpick coupled with some brute force, the pair had crept inside. The hinges made a loud groaning as the gate swung back. One of the hooked, hooded figures grabbed it before it slammed and relaxed back in place. They both audibly gave off a sigh of relief before making their way around to the edge of the main building. For a split second, the glint of near-perfect diamond eyes reflected from beneath one of the thin veils against a passing vehicle. They were all that could be seen between the combined cover of darkness and rain. Another vehicle passed before the area was finally clear. Silently, the pair made their way over to one of the facility's many doors before creeping inside. The corridor that the pair emerged into was as dark as the night sky. After a few seconds, allowing their eyes to adjust to the poor lighting, they lowered their veiled hoods. Okay, so I'm gonna bump there and uh, this. Okay, so the young woman. I'm seeing a lot of the hooded figures. Blah blah. It's a lot of ignore that. Yeah, ignore but I'm just bringing it up as a note for now. Yeah. So this is. I know this is something that makes you cringe as you read. <laughs> it makes me cringe as I listen as well. But what we're doing here is a lot more structural. So yeah. you can you can safely ignore all that. Uh, uh, knowing that it's gonna blow up anyway, mm -hmm. we're we're not keeping any of this. Like we we are aiming, uh, we are aiming a complete uh, rewrite of the thing, and to do that, we uh, we will uh, uh, we will draw an outline based based on what's here right now, but that means. I won't call out uh, any of the horrible <laughs> constructions, and and you can, we 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 know that you cringe when you read. It. <laughs> you don't have to point it out all the time. So the the main point of this second section here is oh yeah, char you got it yeah characters. Yeah. <clears throat> but so also. Uh, also, maybe let's let's start picking it apart already because uh, I mean I would I would rather work on the new setting a little bit before listening to any more of this. All right, yeah, I think that let's let's take this in chunks and deal with it in small chunks. So, where are we going first? This two or one? What do you mean? Do you, uh, would you like me to read on, or are we gonna stop and? No, let's let's stop and start okay, actually working right. with the thing. Um, which we're going with one, right? Okay. Yes. All right. So <clears throat> the point here is to very with, with very broad strokes uh, provide the idea where we are. Mm hmm. Uh, who we're dealing with, and we might not yet know what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> incidentally, I was listening yesterday to a uh, uh, to a writership podcast episode called "The Shoe Ladder," and uh, it was mostly dedicated to all the writing that is there, like. That that becomes redundant and unnecessary in the final drafts. Like when it's when I, when you do the first draft and when you write the scene out for yourself, uh, you are over explaining certain things and over emphasizing and and uh, and repeating and such. And and that's uh, one of the examples that they brought was that uh, it's the scenes where people are walking from one place to another and nothing really happens. Uh, so, <laughs> so, 
I immediately thought of you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That no, it is one of my biggest. Yeah. And I, and uh, and the gist of the episode was that all of that. Uh, you shouldn't fret if you have all of that in your first draft. It's just that you have to get rid of it once you actually revise your work. Mm -hmm. And uh, and with that in mind, I would say that uh, maybe you shouldn't beat up yourself over this text because even though you released it, this essentially is a first draft. Yeah, fair to say. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so, so on one hand, you might cringe all you want uh, in silence, but this is a first draft, and as such, uh, it, it's it's supposed to be horrible. Mm -hmm. Or like, well, not. I I, well, not, I, I no. get it. Not not everybody's <laughs> first drafts are horrible, but it's it's okay if it's horrible. It's really just getting the ideas out of your head and onto the paper. Yeah, but now we need to find out what those ideas are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, point one. Uh, in any text, I would not <coughs> use the construction archaen. Also, I think uh, right now we have settled on on this spelling. Yeah. If it's like something off the da da da, mm -hmm. I wouldn't use this construction like a as a, as a carpet rule. The editor says there shall be a carpet rule that in any text, unless you have used our chaos in the uh, unconjugated, unmolested shape, you can't use any of its derivatives. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's it's going to be it, it's it's going to confuse. Yeah. Yep. And and also, this does not say anything. And also, uh, if. If your if your goal is to say what planet we're on, there is no Archaeus. There is Archaeus four, Archaeus whatever. So they 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 have numbers. This is this is the other thing, right? This is me looking at it through the lens of whole planet, uh, mm -hmm. which is a lens we've got rid of now. That's um, yeah. Um, so so let's say we could we could say. Just, I explain just, that really just, badly. Just pulling just pulling some examples out of my ass. Uh, the rain was was splattering on the empty streets of the Space Triad's warehouse district on Archaeus 3. Something like that. Yeah. So basically, uh, give, give it more specifics. And and here's another thing regarding the world building. Uh, I'm I'm not assuming in which planet we are exactly. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how the cities here are built up. But uh, uh, but this this would be one chance to immediately deviate from the whole. Uh, 20th century uh, western city model where you have uh, uh, land vehicles and and roads. Mhm. Mm so yeah, that was instead thing that instead it could be a cable car. That was the other thing we did in uh, Escape from Caressa, right? Mm -hmm. The city I'd built it up in the very western, it's got roads, you know, that sort of thing. And really it it doesn't make sense in the city. Yeah, it's like why is the why is all the future stuck in the Reagan era? <laughs> oh, I could have done a Nixon joke, but that wouldn't have made much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Anyway, back back to this. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, <clears throat> I I I get that uh, we shouldn't maybe spend too much time on this because. Uh, because the the city where they're at, or the location where they're at, maybe maybe it's not even a city, maybe it's near port. Da -da -da -da. Uh, we will only glimpse it for for a little bit. But uh, but we have to know enough to convincingly place the characters into the setting. Mm -hmm. So what did you say? Like a tram? Uh, I, I was I was thinking like 
cable car yeah uh, or in like if if i'm borrow if i will borrow from seeker then the trans the uh rental or you know summon summonable transport thingy was riding on some sort of uh uh imaginary lines like i don't think they were physical cables it was more like uh Magnetic containment mm-hmm. or or waypoints or something. Yeah. Uh, or if it's a surface vehicle, it could, it could be a skimmer. The skimmers are cool. <laughs> I need to arrange these notes a bit better. Hang on. Let's put a full stop there. Oh, already. <laughs> Pow. I'm getting really excited. <laughs> it's like, ooh, personality. Exterior. <laughs> Exterior. Yeah. I mean, the natural thing to say here would be like, as it. Da 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 through da 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 da, but I don't know if I wanna. It's a, it's it's more flowery than I care, but it's a massive improvement. the doorstep of well, I for one like all sorts of personalized verbs to be um, combined with uh, inanimate objects <laughs> I, I know that some some editors frown upon it. <laughs> some some of our mutual friends frown upon it. <laughs> mm. But I I call it characteristic, <laughs> metaphorical speak. Um, I'm I've got a feeling there should be like a vehicle stop here, because uh, at this point it's speeding through. And then oh, at yeah, this the point vehicle it spits stopped out. and spat out da, 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 whatever. Okay, or yeah. the vehicle came to a stop at da, 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 and spat out two passengers. Yeah. 
Yep. And then would that be like before buzzing away or before it buzzed away? The, the buzzing away might we might ignore that altogether. Okay. Right. right, so this <laughs> we have smoothly transitioned from outlining to just just lining. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm thinking uh, the names, the district names and planets and such should maybe come out through dialogue. Okay. Or, or say, mentioning something, uh, something about the local climate, like. It didn't often rain on this uh, continent of this da 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 da, but when it did, etc. 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 I'm going to put a placeholder here. Mm -hmm. So this could go either between the first two sentences or at the very beginning. It was the rainy season. <laughs> or the rainy season was upon us. It's or, or just like know. a throwaway sort of line mm -hmm. to talk about the thing. Okay. I'm going to like Ray these because we've sort of pulled this together into this sentence here. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, we've actually covered all of this. <laughs> uh. So basically we need to establish who, who came out of the speeder. Mm -hmm. Maybe write down some notes. Who, who are we seeing? Uh, ooh. Well, we know who the characters are. It's Luna and Rogue. Um, the, the reader doesn't. This is true. So as authors, we know who it is. Like but right now, it's it's like if it's not in the frame, it does not exist. Right now, <laughs> nothing exists of this story, but. The fact that there has been a vehicle that has spat out two figures. We know nothing yeah. else. So everything else you will have to present from scratch. Yep. So the way I've currently written is they're wearing hoods. So they've stepped just, out. Just write down the keywords. What are okay. we what are we seeing? Stop okay. stop yapping and <laughs> stop start typing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. If, if we use like the the Earth metric for every type, just in our author notes. Okay, I will allow it for. <laughs> like this, this will this will not this will not make in the final text, mind no. you. <laughs> but yeah, just just write down what we're supposed to see. Don't don't worry about uh, how it will read later on. I will. I will uh, mangle it all. 
Yeah. When I say fully veiled, it's like a. It's not like a burka where there's like a the slip for the eyes. It's like a full face covering, but it's like uh, the fencing mask <laughs> yeah, kind of thing. Pretty much, yeah. So you can still see so, through it. So, so it's more like a visor, mesh visor, that could okay. also filter out maybe the air impurities. So it could actually be a part of a a somewhat sophisticated suit. Like it, it looks, it looks simple, but it actually, uh, it actually works as a as an air filter, maybe. Uh. Oh my god. <laughs> I like that. In the original, um, the um, they do. I suppose the hooded things do have a little bit, like the cloaks do have a little bit of technology built into them. Like the um, what is it? One of in split personality um, one the middle. Oh, that's it. No, it's not in split. It was in split personality two. The unwritten, like I started writing, <laughs> didn't make it. They um. Their cloaks actually protect against cold weather as well. Like, <laughs> you so, don't say. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's like, but it's like more like they can go into extreme environments. Mm, so we're yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got you. Wearing like massive coats and stuff like that. And actually, Fallon says to him, "What are you wearing that for? That's not going to protect you." And then they're like charging out ahead of the group, and they're more. Uh, they can move around easier and stuff like that mm. because they're not weighed down with massive coats. So, <laughs> so like, that was one of the things. <laughs> you don't say a cloak <laughs> that functions as a cloak. <laughs> uh, Imagine let's see. that. So let's let's juggle some visuals as well. Bam. Let's put stealth in quotes. It's not really stealth, it's like... Um, doesn't make you as obvious. Like, you can still see someone, but you probably got to be looking for them. Hmm. So, I shared my screen. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. So this, th I noticed this one the other day. <laughs> I like that. That's a cool looking hood as well. Mhm. Mm There's a shit ton of some fashion pins lately. It's mostly spaceships and character models. Mhm. Mm Oh, Oops. I didn't right. save all the character models. Okay, so this one is f is from an. I remember this one from quite early on. Hmm. Uh. Where's that one with that little cloak? Yeah, that one. That. In the middle. This one. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Oh, okay, now it lets me open them. Ah, oh, this is like a, a flight suit or, or a jumpsuit. <coughs> yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. This uh, I think uh, some of these, uh, some of the images were under related that I didn't actually pin. Yoink! <laughs> these are great. <laughs> but uh, as I understand, we're we're basically thinking more like. Uh, more like uh, minimal details, no lavish anything. Mm -hmm. Just sort of more like more like this, maybe. Oh, it's rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Yeah, pretty simple. It works well. Simple and not uh, not obstructing movement. That's kind of important. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh. 
dual kata dual katanas or wakasashi or whatever they are. Nice. And uh, ooh, oh, oh, those are cool. <laughs> Which ones? These? The the wrist blades. Yeah, they're ooh. wicked. Ah, <laughs> uh, I keep thinking of weapons for Jasmine, and I settled on like karambits or something for a while. Um, but I mean, these look inspirational. Oh my god, look at all these. Those finger claws look nasty as well. These are probably... They, they probably look nastier than they work. Mm -hmm. Probably really impractical. Mm -hmm. Oh! Boob window? <laughs> this is the impractical armor. Oh, That's cool. So yeah, when I when I first read uh, those descriptions, it was it's almost like you you can't tell the setting immediately, like it uh, it kind of sort of read like a steampunk almost occasionally. Okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, but then again, you would want to make it clear what it is. This is another yeah. thing that I learned from uh, another recent uh, ridership podcast. <laughs> so it's like well, uh, actually, while we're while we're talking about the ridership podcast, all the listeners who don't quite know what ridership is, it's a channel on YouTube, and they actually do. Oh no, no, it's no, the, uh, not, not the on YouTube. They have the their own site. They 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 do have the uh, podcast on iTunes and some other podcast services, I think. But uh, I, I'm I'm usually listening them straight from the straight from the source, yo. <laughs> so you got writership, and I think that's just writership.com, and they do they so. do the podcasty things and. Let me check. Uh, like you can submit stuff to them, and they. I will. I will handle it. Summon it on the screen. Mhm. Mm so they're a great resource, and the other great resource is um, Keystroke Medium and they are on YouTube they're the they're the great ones yes. who uh, are really easy to listen to yeah so the the most recent episode is the one where actually <laughs> this is this is like a crossover of Keystroke Medium and ridership all of us <laughs> but yeah here uh, here one of the points was that uh, you should kind of give pointers of your genre early on like if your if your thing reads like a historical fiction and then all of a sudden ghosts pop pop up, it might be it might be so late in the story that uh, your reader get gets a whiplash. So in our case, we wanna we wanna sort of give give the vibe of spaceships and uh, space immediately. Mm -hmm. Call it out early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Call it out early so that uh, the reader ki kind of know what they're in for. Mm -hmm. And that's it. The outfits are getting more and more uh, costumey, mm. or more, 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 more. I don't know. Steampunk isn't isn't quite the word here, but I think more. cleavage. Cleavage is a key word you could use. <laughs> that too, <laughs> but I mean, uh, I I mean like uh, from practicality standpoint, <laughs> I will save this one as well. This is also kind of futury. We could spend all day on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's really good. So basically what what we are speaking of, the the impression that these two characters make is that they are hooded, dark, mm -hmm. uh, kind of minimalistic. Yeah, I'm gonna write these notes down like minimalistic. Mm -hmm. So the this this pin kind of kind of uh, gets grasps it, except they have some sort of overcloaks as well. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. 
underneath a cloak you might very well have this sort of full body suit probably mm -hmm. uh, probably has some armor in it probably has some holding slots gadgetry all that um, equipment slots right mm -hmm. no wait slots for do that <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> do that slots While you write all that down, I will scroll just in case to see if I have any any other new thingies. So this uh, this will apply later, but I saved this one as one of the examples of how the uh, reclaimer body markings could run. Like okay, this is a this is a, an actual ornate tattoo, but uh, I was thinking that the reclaimer markings could run somewhat in somewhat similar manner. Yeah. Like they're sort of going all over the body, yeah, and branching and and sort of very fractally. Is my thinking? Ooh. I think we have stumbled upon fashion. <laughs> 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 a, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, basically the the people shots are from two main sources. Like one is character models for RPGs, and the other is uh, is fashion uh, fashion stuff. And sometimes the two <laughs> cross over. Before we jump out, this android on the right here, th the. Um, down? Yeah, the one with dreadlocks. This, um, or oh, dreadlocks, robot, really Cables. Dope. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, this character, but a more male looking version, uh, this is basically what I imagine for Shade in Mirror's Legion. Mm. So this is, this is great. This is a really good looking, uh, inspirational piece of work. There, there are some male versions here, although they are. <gasps> I woke up this morning. And my left, my left arm's still aching. My left, for some reason, my shoulder's really stiff, and it's hard to move it out of certain areas. Um, and I was, I didn't, I wasn't even annoyed. I was like, mm, the start of the <laughs> <Robot> <laughs> Heart project, you know? It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think these are mostly female models. Ooh. That's cool. Yoink. <laughs> also this. Cleaner bugs at Murphy Station. <laughs> now the cleaner bugs are, are like more more organic looking. So they are like uh like this this one is clearly a bot, but those would be like ambiguous, like you almost they are oversized and they're like uh Wait, what am I looking at here? Okay, I think I think I I have some of these in uh, the collection anyway. Ah, oh, yeah, this is the Expanse Marine. I think I have this one saved somewhere, or this one. These are great. There's a lot of mechs popping up as well. Uh -huh. Big fan of mechs. Oh, this one also. Uh, in terms of body suits and and doodads, so this one is more like plated. Mm. Thing. Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah, this is another one of those. Uh, Somewhat minimalistic, somewhat practical, somewhat, you know. Hmm. Yoink. <laughs> okay, one more quick scroll and then I will. I will 
return to the other matters. So here is a, an, a more mm, more detailed sort of full body thingy. <coughs> um, oh, yeah. The I think the blonde haired chick just caught my eye. To be honest with you, I don't know what I'm. <laughs> I, I oh, I she looks like a badass. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think I saved this one. Uh, with the clear intention to show this one to you. <laughs> That's cool. And also ample doodads slots and all that. Mm-hmm. Backstabbered! <laughs> <laughs> Hunter, except for the boob cups, this is a pretty empowering <laughs> outfit. <laughs> <laughs> not degrading or objectifying. Good work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I, I generally, when I when I check the uh, all sorts of armor, uh, armor art, then I deliberately try to stay away from boob cups. But if the if the specimen is otherwise uh, very nice, then I make an exception. So basically, this is this is this is what a proper armor would look like mm -hmm. because boob cups do not provide proper armor. Oh, <laughs> this one was one of one of the oh uh, one of the thinking of rogue. Basically, rogue, right? One hundred percent. Jesus. Even some sort of abilities mm. showing up. You, you, if you get a second, you should definitely send me this picture. <laughs> I know it's on the Pinterest, but I might save it to my hard drive. Uh, when you log in to Pinterest, I think you can download stuff, maybe? Let's see what else is here in the related. This stuff is great. Okay, this, uh. is, this is more <laughs> fantasy stuff, but still... Yeah, I think the uh, the term that I was looking for earlier wasn't so much steampunk as as fancy. Oh, okay, we already have this. Yoink! Yoink! Who else do we have here? Hmm. The mask is really intimidating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I have to save this one. <laughs> I think it was uh, one designer's uh, collection that I stumbled upon that had a whole lot of this type of pants. Like, mm, mm, tell me more. <laughs> you might also like airsoft. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so basically, I love the crotch protector. <laughs> That's what, great. Wait, what, where? Go off a little bit. There you go. <laughs> this? <laughs> Looks like a bit of a crotch protector. <laughs> Tactical military and law enforcement. Mm, makes sense. But yeah, so so, so basically it's, it's this sort of a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit asymmetrical, uh, mostly minimalistic a little maybe a hint of uh, a hint of uh, medieval japanese aesthetic mixed in hooded dark sort of deal i'll close this down now bam 
So medieval Japanese aesthetic. Yes. You know, like samurai armor inspiration, but not I've got much. it. I just wanted to make sure I was writing down the right thing. Oh, okay. Asymmetric, minimalistic, perhaps medieval Japanese aesthetic. Um, what were the other things you said? Like sleep? Oh, not you didn't use the word sleep, but minimalist. Uh, yeah. So I like, uh, so like when the when the description rains down, then you won't start. You won't get tangled into I don't know flowery ornaments or any of that. So when you describe when you when you get describing them, then it's more about shape. And shape and shadow. <laughs> I'm going to highlight green these notes. Mm. Also, it would seem that if uh, if they have some sort of overcloak uh, atop of the otherwise very functional bodysuit, then the cloak would also hide all sorts of weapons. I think we cover the weapons later on. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I mean that right now you can't see any. That's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the the purpose of the multipass. The purpose of the cloak would be to conceal as well as uh, heat regulate as well as camouflage etc 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 so environmental protection as well as concealment camouflage oh <laughs> that was right it was camouflage camouflage right. <laughs> yeah limitro <laughs> I'd have got away with that in America, right? Because they seem to have got rid of their unnecessary use in all their le their like color, for example. Uh, no, it's it's the other way around. They didn't get rid of it. You adopted an extra U. Oh, uh, because okay. of the, because of the French. Oh. So the uh, the American spelling is, is reflecting the older standard than British. The British adopted the uh, the extra use later. Well, there you go. <laughs> Every day is a school day. <laughs> at least, at least I read it. That's what I read on the internet. There, there's probably a today I found out episode about it somewhere knocking around as well. Maybe. Could be. Okay, so the first first paragraph gives us an idea of the surroundings and gives us a glimpse of the characters. Yep. Actually, right now what the uh, what the sec what the piece that I marked as a second paragraph does is the same or like up until the point where they where they start opening any shit is drawing a picture of where we're at and who we're dealing with and when they start tackling some locks and, and stuff then that's that's the second sort of second step uh, I am gonna s I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit here and say that sturdy metal panel and high rise complex and all that and locks and all that this also reads very steampunky to me like it it gives the sort of heavy industrial sort of thing but I think am, am I in the wrong genre <laughs> <laughs> could be <laughs> so I think I think we need to. Uh, let's let's put it through uh, uh, through Shadowrun filter for <laughs> starters, and then yeah. maybe we can we can uh, distance ourselves from from it and and end up somewhere else. 
mean, I think stepping stones are important, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Initiate. So, so what would this district look like? So, I know that I said this. Uh, we we won't uh, spend too much time on it, but where are we at? Uh, where are we? Yeah, where so, are we? <laughs> Why are we here? <laughs> um, I just sort of thought of a shitty rundown uh, industrial estate kind of deal, which is exactly the opposite of what we're going for now. Now that we're not using the, what did you call it, the Reagan era lens of looking at things, like the city layout and stuff like that. My original thoughts don't really make sense anymore. Now they've it come could, under scrutiny. It could still be. It could still be a shitty, shitty district. Oh. Shitty district. Okay, let's let's stick with that. But uh, but uh, let's say the shitty district is shitty in the backdrop or in or in the context of uh, the actual uh, the actual uh, world that happens elsewhere. So it's like. If in Seeker we we painted a picture of this uh, almost uh, uh, almost celestial city of uh, like that rises from the ground and every and all the all the buildings are fused into the si into the mound structure itself and it's very sort of mount basically the city is a mountain. Mm -hmm. And in here, this could be more like uh, some sort of spaceport surrounding area. Uh, oh, that's good. Actually, that 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 works quite well. So, I, so the oh, so the on. speeder or the the rental skimmer once it's uh, once it has delivered them, the empty skimmer turns back to the spaceport that looms on the horizon <laughs> lights up the horizon oh uh, yeah. yes i know that i have already used it uh, elsewhere but let's let's let, let, it, let it be the stepping stone here <laughs> yeah so the the space the spaceport basically illuminates ooh the uh, the lights from the spaceport are the only light, only proper light source here. Yep. Um. A no manned vehicle would come here voluntarily. Voluntarily. <laughs> 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 Wrong words. Volunteer, voluntarily, Dave. Come on now, voluntarily. I, do, I, I don't know how it's. <laughs> it's all I's and R's and L's and nonsense. Get out of here, voluntarily. Um, on their the own volition. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna also maybe. Some of these buildings are derelict, like they're not in use anymore. They're just empty mm. buildings. So uh, here's the thing: how many buildings do we even uh, need to have here? Ooh. Maybe it's maybe it's mostly container yards and such, container yards and derelict ships. That works great because we're close to the spaceport. Maybe just cargo, derelict ships. Yeah, and uh, and you could have the situation that makes total sense to me is that when you have decommissioned ships, they will be used as buildings, maybe? Oh. Here and there? Yes. yes. So, like... I, w I would say that this is a, this is a regular thing. Using using old ships that you don't uh, recycle, or like ships that haven't been recycled, using repurposing them as as uh, buildings or dwellings or warehouses or secret underground bars is just what you do. Like that's that's just a rule. Seeker. Um, there was also a very, very old Risto story where he had a ship and they parked it up next to a bar 
and it became the sleeping quarters and mm -hmm. home for all the bar stuff and everything like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Home. So it's like, <laughs> it's the camper one of the few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and like, even in our days, we are making uh, houses out of shipping containers. So why not, uh, why not repurpose the whole ships? It. So it could be that, the, and again, I'm jumping forward in in the plot now. It could even be that the uh, that the quote unquote building that our brave heroines need to gain access to uh, is also a decommissioned ship, and they need to get past its outer locks instead of uh, working their way through uh, heavy metal gates. Heavy metal gates. I've got this image in my head of Bill Gates wearing a Slayer t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> yeah. Yes, perfect. <laughs> Okay, these are, these are more notes, so I'm going to green these up as well. I get confused easily, right, apparently. This is... Yeah. Uh, maybe use a more distinctive color, because you can't properly tell the difference between light blue and light gray in certain circumstances. The green can stay, right? Yeah. Okay. The gray... Mm, or maybe yeah. maybe just uh, re color the text itself. Yeah, can do. Because then it's it's not as blocky. It will be easier to, you know, browse through later on. I think, I hope. If we change the text to red, maybe that will do. Uh, red is too aggressive, and also yeah. red is like this is wrong. Maybe I don't know. Purple or or some some sort of blue variation. Okay, purple purple works. Okay, so we've got an idea of the location. We've got an idea of our character descriptions. Okay, uh, here's how I would do the marking. What I would do is I would put an, a marker on the old text, but uh, recolor the notes text. Okay, so this is this is old so, text. So yeah, this, so this the is fine. so so the opposite of what you've done. Oh, right. so highlight this and yeah, yeah, turn yeah, the yeah, notes yeah. into it. Oh, okay, right, yeah. got you. Oh, actually, we can just do Control Z, can we? Is this going to work yes, for this? Yes, it should. So that's correct, right? The mm -hmm. Gray highlight, and then this shouldn't be highlighted. Yeah, so the notes part make it, I don't know, marine, Adorable. blue, oh, okay. whatever, whatever. All right, yeah. Whatever strikes your fancy. <laughs> I'm in a purple mood today. Okay. And then old text is gray, but we haven't covered this. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah, yeah. Step the f away. <laughs> we mark as we work through it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. we can't tell what where we where we have been. So at some point, we have to get to the part where we address that there are two characters that they have arrived. Oh God! Look at all this highlighting mess that's going on now. <laughs> Let me just. Yeah. Okay, but oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. okay, but no. now now that we have basically uh, gotten an idea of where we're at and what the setting is and how everything kind of looks, I think I will bank this recording. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, uh, we have the port district. Near uh, near spaceport, lots of uh, 
stacking and warehousing and repurposed chips and this is this is our setting and also it's raining it's always raining <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not uh, but it's it is now <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is and this is not a district where a manned vehicle would come on its own volition. <laughs> a driver won't bring you there, bring you here. No. And on that note, let's wrap this one up. And in the next bit, let's carry on with the characters. I think. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.